clean up this room and then we're gonna head for supper. We're gonna find out who won, but it's gonna be a little later. Fast food. It's gonna be fun. What did you watch? Um, so who's free? I am free. Good job. <laughs> something disgusting. Raise your hand. A bunch of you guys, yell out what was your least favorite thing you ate. Fetos! That wasn't even part of the game. Oh, Fetos. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fetos. Who else had to eat wasabi? Wasabi, anyone else? Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I can't even. Did you guys see what she had to eat? What, what was on yours? Mm -hmm. And that was all thanks to your loving, loving boyfriend, Ben, right? Yeah. 
Oh, what, what everyone say, oh, how nice. That's, that's what love looks like there. Uh, I guess it's all in different perspectives, right? But some of the things that you guys are freaking out about eating, I was like, no worries. Um, but it's interesting how we see things differently. I remember my wife and I were driving down the road, and we like to talk when we're driving, and so one thing we were doing is just talking about different bumper stickers that we saw on the car. And my wife made a passive comment about how she liked this one deer bumper sticker. And I was like, Bree, there is no there is no deer bumper sticker. It's a fish. And she and I, you know, as this being just a very important topic, began to talk about it for not one or two minutes, but for probably about a ten solid minutes. We argued whether or not this car had a deer or a fish bumper sticker. And we're arguing more and more about it, and then we realized we weren't even talking about the same car. And we were arguing about this, and I was just like, what, <laughs> what a waste of time. But today I want to talk about what it means for us to have a different sort of perspective on life. And today I'm going to give you the most encouraging message that you've never wanted to hear. I'll say that again, the most encouraging message that you've never wanted to hear. But before we do that, look at someone and say, you're different. You're very different. <laughs> you're very different. Okay, one thing that I want to say to you guys is that Jesus never promised us that we're going to be rich. I wish you did. He never promised that we wouldn't be heartbroken by the person that we're dating. He never promised that it wouldn't rain on our vacation. Or he never promised that you wouldn't get wasabi and marshmallow fluff and relish on your toast. He never promised that we wouldn't face difficult things. But what did he promise? We can see in John 15, 18, and 20, uh, where it says this, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you you also. In other words, what did he promise? He promised that we would face adversity. If we're following after God, if we're following after Jesus and being the person that we are called to be, we're going to face difficult times in our life. It's a promise. And remember the context that first Peter is writing into when he's talking to the early church. The, the emperor was, you guys remember? Nero. The emperor was Nero and he did terrible things. He killed his mom, his wife, most likely his second wife. And he burned a large part of Rome just so he could rebuild it. And his favorite pastime was torturing Christians. He would burn them alive. He would uh, have uh, wild animals attack them. And the early Christians were under just extreme persecution. But oftentimes when we talk about persecution in the church, we think of it as something that has happened in the past. And we are so lucky to live in a country where we can have, we can have our beliefs, where we can be Christians and maybe we may face some persecution, but it's not like it is in other parts of the world. In fact, many believe that this last decade was the worst decade for, for Christian persecution in the history of the world. On average, in the last decade, every month, 322 Christians were killed. In the, uh, on average, in the month, 214 Christian churches have been destroyed. And 772 acts of violence being the uh, beatings or tortures or sexual assaults happen every single month. We take for granted the fact that we can live our life and have our beliefs and not really face anything coming up against us. And, and for some places in the world, when, if, for them to be a Christian, they may lose their family. For others, they may lose their job. In other parts, they're arrested and beaten. Or maybe here, maybe we're not invited to the party that we wish that we were, but, but people look at us different so they didn't invite us. But instead, we're called to have a different perspective, even in adversity. In 1 Peter 4.12, it says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through, as if something strange were happening to you. If you're living faithfully in Christ, it's saying that you should not be surprised if you face opposition, if you face adversity. Who in here likes to play sports? Raise your hand. A bunch of you guys, I see you guys are, are super athletic and it's been fun to see you guys playing games. I was impressed with your hungry hippo skills. Um, but I like to play sports and there's a few that I'm pretty good at, but football is not one of them. I'm terrible at football. I remember in elementary school, you know how like, you line up and there's the captains and then they choose people. And I was always like the last kid picked for football because I'm terrible. I, wouldn't, I would never pay attention. Uh, I could never catch the ball. And so who do you think that the, the other team focused a lot of attention on? 
not me. Because why would they pay attention to me? Because I'm out in the middle, or I can't catch even if they throw it to me. So I'm in the middle. There's no one around me, and I'm like, throw me the ball. The quarterback's ignoring me. But who do you think they do pay attention to? The kid who catches it every single time. They're getting double teamed. They're getting triple teamed. And they're like, that's how sports works. The person who's in the game making a difference is the person who gets attention from the enemy. And sometimes when we look at our Christianity and our walk, maybe we're not even in the game. We're on the sideline. Yeah, we're on the team. We go to church sometimes because that's what it means to be on the team. But we're not really making a difference. We're distracted and we're looking.